so folks, I am so overjoyed to bring you a good update, a fantastic update, because it has old Donnie finally being put in his place, live, sitting there in the courtroom, because his threats and everything else he and his team have been doing, trying to sow doubt and confusion and distrust in the legal system, has crashed down on them. And it's been utterly humiliating and terrifying for old Donnie. So hit the like and subscribe button, it helps me out a ton, and we're going to jump right into it. Because a lot of people have been asking, how does he get away with it all? How is he and his team getting away with one, you know, just not being truthful about the state of the case, where they're arguing that there's still a lot to be decided and that the judge has actually agreed with them on many things, when in reality, the biggest question of all has already been decided against them. But more and more people are asking, as Trump treats this like a show, why aren't his threats being taken seriously? And at least in one way, the judge smacked Donald and told him to shut his effing mouth, at least when it comes to the worst things he's been saying. And Trump looked terrified as he heard it because he's not just threatening the judge. He's even threatening the judge's staff. And that goes way too far. Watch all this and then we'll break it down. This is all day one, but I, I, here's, I, I have a big question about all of this because something's been bothering me. What? Uh, why can he continue to threaten judges, threaten AGs, and threaten just people? Now, I understand that some folks say it's, it's freedom of speech, but if I did that... Yeah. They would not consider it freedom of speech. So why does he get to continue to threaten? And, and it's threats like he did with January 6th. He basically said, come after her. Yeah. yeah. He didn't yeah. say exactly those words, but I don't know how else you can take those words. Well, but why is he continuously allowed to do that when none of us would be he, able to do it? Not just the threats. He also says that Millie should be shot. Yes. That it was okay with, these things. with Mike why? Pence getting shot. Why? He's allowed to say because Why? He hides behind the First Amendment, I well, guess. He is hiding behind the First Amendment, but I will tell you in some of his federal cases, mm -hmm. there are gag orders. They're not expansive, mm -hmm. but some of them are like, you better watch out because if you threaten a witness or you do this or you do that, and federal <coughs> judges don't play like that. Mm -hmm. I am surprised that that has not happened yet in yeah. New York mm -hmm. with Attorney General James because she strikes me as someone that doesn't play with those types of things. She's busy either. staring him down. She's, <laughs> she's, she's staring him down. And I think the reason that he keeps on doing this is because it fires up his base. But most importantly, the reason he even showed up at this is because this threatens everything about his alleged empire, which he doesn't really have, we all know. But she's asking for $250 million. He's not going to serve any jail time or anything like that, but he will lose all of his business certificates in New York. He's already lost those, actually, believe it or not. But you know, you, so if you can't watch his him, business. If you watch him, I watched him, I was home yesterday mm -hmm. watching. He really looks scared. He looks scared. He's very defiant, he but that's that's a cover. Looked, well, it yeah. goes to but your you know, like I said, what's important to him. What I said money. last week about him and how he went bananas yeah. when uh, well, Rosie O'Donnell mentioned his uh, financial situation. This is what he cares about. He doesn't yeah. care about his children. He doesn't care about the country. He only cares about his money and power. Yeah. And to stay out of jail. Yes. And so, Trump Tower will yeah. go. And I think that he, I think he's scared, and I think he's very nervous. Well, his threats to judges are catching up with him. Maybe not the way that he anticipated. So he's been going after the judge in this case, and then it turns out his crack attorney forgot to actually request a jury trial. Well, that one so, sitting next to him? Yes, so yes. now it's actually going to be the judge he's been going after <laughs> deciding his case, and I'm just like, it's so it's dumb. It's Ice, who's a former Florida Solicitor General, a very smart lawyer, was basically up on his feet objecting to everything. Their basically argument is that, look, the judge has already decided this trial. He decided Trump was guilty of fraud last week. They're clearly going to appeal at some point. And I think they're basically trying to you know, build a basis for that through this proceeding. And John, did I hear correctly yesterday, the judge said that this trial will last till the week of Christmas. Yes. And if so, what's going to take that long? Well, I mean, there's going to be dozens. If you look at the uh, witness list, there's dozens of witness, witnesses on, on both sides, including the Trumps and uh, the people who work for them, but also lots of financial experts to Trump's people will put uh, financial experts up saying, you know, these valuations were reasonable. The government will put up their experts saying they weren't reasonable. And it'll, uh, obviously they weren't reasonable, but, um, you know, Trump's 
people have got, I think, some professors from NYU and elsewhere who are willing to say that, you know, I think it was in, within the bounds of reason and valuation is very difficult to decide anyway. That, that'll be their argument. So, John, yesterday we saw performance art from the former right. president stepping outside, as you just pointed out, 10 feet right. from the courtroom to malign the judge and right. everything else that was going on inside the courtroom. What are the odds? How long will he continue to go back to court in person? Well, that's, uh, that's the great question, right? I mean, last week, nobody expected him to turn up. He doesn't have to turn up. It's a civil trial. But uh, after the judge's ruling, he, he decided to turn up. I don't think he'd be there all the time. I think he might be there today and tomorrow. This week, he's clearly turning into, you know, this is his media strategy for the week, attending his trial. I doubt he'll sit, sit through all the expert witnesses, but he may be called back to testify. And I wouldn't be surprised if he pops in now and again, because... This is, as you say, it's like a show for him, I think, and he's running till Christmas. He sees himself as the star. I'm sure he will pop in now and again. This is his sphere. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's what's sort of, um, I guess, most disturbing about it. You know, last week, all the stories were this is a big setback for Trump. He's, um, for the first time, been called a, a fraudster, basically, by a court, by a judge. And uh, this week, he's turning it into basically a, a campaign trail appearance for him. John, he's not only been called a fraudster by a judge, it undermines his whole brand that he did his television show around, that he's, he's built this whole myth that he has to defend. And, 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 and I, I want to ask you about something you said, because I think it goes to the core of what I was thinking as someone who's known Trump and fought with him for 30 years. Part of the reason I think he showed up is he really doesn't think anyone can fight and defend him like he can, which is why, as you say, the lawyers were like uh, exercise because he was sitting there. And I think right. he feels if he wasn't there, they would uh, not be as exercised. They would not be as energetic. I need to be there to give these guys some guts. And then I'm going in the hallway and do what no one could do for Donald Trump. And that is defend Donald Trump, call people names, because anyone in their right mind would not do do this other than a supreme narcissist. I think that's why he had to be there, aside from the political uh, advantage he thinks he's getting with the media uh, coverage. I think you, you might well be right, Reverend. As you say, I mean, he's probably right in, in media terms, right? Nobody can speak out like Trump and attract the attention that Trump attracts. It was also interesting yesterday that he has two lawyers. He has Kais, who is a you know, very experienced lawyer who's argued before the Supreme Court. And he also has Alina Haber, his sort of TV lawyer most of the time. She gave an opening statement, which was very Trumpian. In Important developments inside Donald Trump's civil fraud trial. The judge just made clear what can and cannot be discussed and what has already been determined. Namely, this judge made clear that he's already ruled that Trump committed fraud and he's sort of done listening to arguments about that seen as Bryn Gingras live outside the courthouse in downtown Manhattan with the very latest Bryn. Yeah, John, I mean, we're on day two of the civil trial, which is expected all the way to last until just before Christmas. And like you just said, the judge going onto the bench this morning saying he fully expects to expect defense attorneys to appeal this trial and also saying that this trial is not an opportunity to mitigate what I've already decided, referencing that decision he made last week uh, about uh, finding Trump and his adult sons and Trump organization uh, liable for fraud. So we'll see how this continues. But on the right now we are hearing more testimony uh, from Trump's former accountant uh, Donald Bender talking about the nitty-gritty of those financial statements how uh, property valuations were uh, um, figured out who figured them out who signed off on them all of those details and we'll continue to hear from the defense of course who is fighting for the fact that there was no intent there was no fraud when preparing financial statements and making valuations of properties and their point they say there was no victims in this case so that is the arguments that we'll continue to see echo throughout uh, this long civil trial. Inside the courtroom, I can tell you that uh, the former president walked in again, did not acknowledge New York Attorney General Letitia James, who's also seated in the courtroom uh, right now. This is right after he made some statements again outside the courtroom about her and about the judge again. Um, and also his son, uh, Eric Trump, is also in the courtroom as well. The question is, how long 
do all of them, especially the former president, do they plan to stay today? They were here the full day yesterday. Uh, that remains to be seen how long he'll stay, stay for this testimony. Uh, we also want to know how many times he'll actually be back at this quarter. We know he is eager to testify in his own defense, uh, so we fully expect that to happen. Again, a lot of stake here. We've been talking about it. Kristen Holmes has given great details about what is at stake here, his brand. He is eager to defend it. And as we've mentioned, uh, the state has said in their opening statements, closing it out, saying that they are asking the judge to make sure that the Trumps never do business in New York again. So this is one we'll, of course, continue to closely watch. Now that the judge has already made clear there was fraud and we're not going to argue whether there was fraud anymore in this courtroom. So how do they move on? Yeah, um, the Trump's team needs to really focus on what still remains in the case. And there's a lot. I mean, there are like six other counts in the case, and those counts do involve intent. Michael Cohn's going to testify. You know, it should be a fun cross-examination for them, although I think it'll hold up pretty well. They need to move off of playing Trump in the courtroom and playing up to their clients sitting there. You know, maybe it'll change when he's not there, John, because while he's there, they really have to play to him. The judge is saying to them, look, I'm tired of you rehashing this point. You've already been sanctioned for making the same arguments over and over again. That's what the appeal's for. Let's move forward and deal with the issues ahead of you right now. What does the government have to prove? How are you going to counter that? That's what the judge is saying to them. And they're doing themselves and their client a disservice if they just continue to make the same arguments that Trump is making in front of the cameras during his press conferences. Shan, there is no jury here. We can't say that enough. That was something that was a choice by Trump's defense team and perhaps Donald Trump himself. They are now arguing with the one person that who is going to decide this case. That doesn't seem like a winning strategy. So you could see that, right? He's there's a great questions like even like like look the, the the ladies on that show are all rich very wealthy powerful prominent women they're in the one well, not even just the one percent but the point one percent um, and the reality is like even they are like I couldn't get away with this let alone a regular Joe a regular Jane or Joe nobody who acted like Trump did if they were on any case civil or criminal they would be they would be jailed they would be held in contempt fined at least but likely jailed for how they're acting towards the judge and the clerks and prosecutors and witnesses and there's no jury in this case but if there was towards the jury like it's inexcusable but you see it there and i, and I have it up on the screen donald trump has been threatening the 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 the, the, the one of the staffers trying to connect them to uh schumer apparently they used to maybe work with schumer but they're calling them schumer's girlfriend even though schumer's happily married i think he's joking there but it's not a very funny or tasteful joke and you know he was embarrassed by that and you knew it looked bad because while he emailed that out to everybody it was immediately posted and then deleted off true social knowing he made a mistake in posting that but the reality is guys the judges told them to to, to, to stop to, to stop attacking people to stop sowing doubt in the case to stop making arguments that are based on threats and based on arguing things that have already been decided the judge is telling them to just to, to and, and trump in particular to close their mouths because right now they are not helping themselves and they're not being good participants in the case and this is a final warning for trump if, frankly he doesn't even deserve that but the threat against the clerk went way too far the judge is pissed and who can blame him?